Hey, what's up everyone? Mitch here with another Logic tutorial. This tutorial is going to be about editing vocals. Vocals, vocals, vocals. Alright, check this out. Vocals are going to be a huge, huge part of any song because they're going to be the centerpiece to that song. And you're going to spend a lot of time on that because they're going to be that centerpiece of that song. Right? And so I'm going to go over some basics to uh, plugins that you're going to need to use and editing of waveforms that you're going to need to do. Uh, so that you can get a very nice sounding uh, vocal vocals yeah alright so um, this track right here this audio um, that you can see right here is already edited waveform edited so um, that's okay I couldn't find any like great um, unedited vocals waveform edited vocals so um, we're stuck with this alright so um, first things first I usually take out all background noise and background noise usually happens obviously when there's no vocals when the singer is not being or singing anything so what I usually do is I go to escape 5 and I usually cut off in between um, his vocals and you need to make sure you don't cut off the tail and or the beginning um, of anything because that's going to sound unnatural and when you go to the next step it's not going to be good at all at all all right so I usually delete that and then in turn I take it and bounce it onto um, a new track um, yeah 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 and so you're going to have this new track and what you're going to do is it's going to take out all the little parts where there's background noise. Now be careful because there are spots where he breathes and breathing is natural and you want that in uh, any song. So this as you can see is a breathing spot. They usually occur obviously right before he sings anything. So you can see definitely a very uh, an increase in waveform right around the beginning of vocals. Be sure not to cut that off. Okay, but um, if it sounds natural, cut around it and get out that um, get out that noise, um, that, which could be anything. Him shuffling around, his clothes moving. It, it just it just depends. So um, once you have your final track, I usually uh, get rid of this old one, but um, I'm not going to do that because I've already done this step. So I'm going to back up. And now you're going to have this track without background noise. And what I do next is something that might be specific to me. I wouldn't know because I didn't learn it from anyone else. And that is going to be I add a limiter to this track. I limit it about one to two decimals, not very much. And then um, I normalize this track. And you can do that by double clicking on your audio form, going up here to functions, and then normalize. This is going to increase the waveform which is a good thing. It's going to add um, kind of like gain, but it's not gain. And I will explain the difference between gain and normalization. Gain, uh, uh, let, let's uh, take for instance, there's a part where there's two, it's two decibels, and then there's another part where it's four decibels. And gain adds a steady amount, so let's say two decibels. So uh, it's going to be uh, four and six. Now the ratio between four and six is going to be different than the ratio between two and four. Okay, this is math here. Hope you uh, understood that because there is a difference and you want to keep that ratio steady and that's what normalization does. So normalize, do not add gain. All right. All right, hope I need that. Wait, I need that to sink in. Okay, good. All right, now we can move on. What I do after I had that limiter and I normalize the track is I bounce it again. I bounce it again. This gets kind of repetitious. But it's something that I do, and it adds, it, it definitely adds a lot to the song, okay? And now that's what I usually do for editing my waveform. Next thing I usually do is start to add plugins. Um, and the two main plugins that you're going to use are compression and equalization. Is that a word? Equalizer. You're going to put equalizer and compression on it. That sounds more natural. So we're going to go with that. You're going to add some equalizer and compression to it. First, equalizer. Always equalizer before compression. Because you want to equal out some uh, spots where it might be bursting through, like uh, uh, some, 
some frequencies that are particularly loud you might be taking out and if you add a compressor before that you're compressing that frequency so you're not going to be able to see it in your equalizer and it's going to just mess up your, e or your compression so always equalizer before compression so I'm going to open up, I'm going to get some equalizer up in her and uh, I'm going to give you some some tips on what I usually do to uh, equalize any vocals All right. First of all, I usually add or boost around 15k, and I'm going to boost at about three decibels. Um, I'm just going to keep it at the same uh, ratio, I guess, or whatever that is, 0.71. That's good. Um, and then another thing I'm going to do is add another boost at around three decibel or three k. Um, add another three decibels. Um, and then keep 0.71. This is going to help the vocals shine a little bit. This is where you want those vocals to be heard, those frequencies. Um, and this is a good frequency because there's going to be guitars right in this frequency right here, and then your bass drum and bass guitar down here, and then, I mean, cymbals around upper, really far upper, um, and then right here is where vocals live, and you want to make sure you capture that. Okay, and about 200 k or 200 hertz here is um, where male vocals have this weird um, boost in frequency that is gets kind of annoying. And I will actually turn on this analyzer and play this track so you can see. And I don't know. It's low and it's um, not great sounding. So um, what I'm going to have you do is take out six decibels so negative six decibels and I'm going to make sure this goes down to 0.71 and I am doing all this 0.71 because of this reason as you see if you add up all of the um, changes you have plus three plus three is six and then minus six so you again have zero this is not adding gain or taking away gain from this track and that's what you want to do in your equalizer phase, equalization, or that's not even a word, obviously. Actually, it could have been. Correct me in the comments below. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but anyway, you want it to be zero. You don't want to be adding or taking away any gain in this phase of editing. Okay? Next thing I'm going to do is compression. Compression. And I'm going to show you some uh, quick tips. Uh, first tip is to take tack low. Um, uh, why am I doing this? Because vocals have um, extreme highs and extreme lows, and this happens very quick. This happens very quick. And if you have a, a long attack, it doesn't have. It doesn't. It doesn't do well with that changing in 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 volume. You want to have a low to attack so it can handle that. And then I'm going to have a release about 50, but 48, whatever. Sure, that's fine. My ratio, I usually keep around 5.0. 5.0, okay. And then I usually, um, my threshold around negative 10, but uh, negative 12 is fine. It just depends, honestly, on uh, what you did in your normalization phase and uh, your peaks, um, just how loud they are. Uh, just just kind of depends. Uh, you're going to want to mess with this and make sure you get the right compression thrush, threshold on it. You want it to be around 3 to 4 decibels of gain reduction, which means you're going to have to add about 3 to 4 decibels of uh, a gain to it to make up. And as you can see, there's 4 decibels of makeup gain, which is good, perfect, and that's about what we need. Obviously, you're going to spend a lot more time on these two because these are the, mo the two most important plugins that you're going to be using for any vocals. All right. Next thing I'm going to be using is the de-esser. Um, some 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 vocalists don't need this, but some do, and uh, actually most do. And so I'm going to be showing you a little bit. This, this is a pretty simple plugin if you haven't used it. Pretty much, there's going to be a detector which you can set at a certain frequency. And that frequency is going to be high because sss, that's a very high frequency, okay? And then you're going to have your suppressor around a different frequency. That's going to be down here. And you want it to be, again, around that exact same um, frequency because you're going to want to detect it and take it out around the exact same. Oh, hey, check it out. My startup disk is almost full. 
that's probably not a good thing. All right. So um, I'm just gonna keep going here. Uh, sensitivity. I want it to be uh, pretty high. Pretty high. Um, not not too much. And then strength. I want it to be around what it is usually when you open it up. And if you want to check to see if it's doing anything, you can come down here to detector, and I'm going to monitor the suppressor on it. And every time there's an S, this activity light should show up, and that is a good thing. You want to, that to be happening. So, let's see. And I don't know why you've come to save my empty soul. And as you can see, it blinked when there was an S, and that's exactly what I want to happen. So it's doing its job, all right? So de -er. And finally, reverb, reverb, reverb. So many people put reverb on everything and too, and in too big of quantity. You want to be careful with the amount of reverb that you use, okay? Um, vocals, if you want them to stand out and be just very piercing, which is what most vocals want to do, especially in rock and rap, um, be very careful with, uh, you know, Reverb. If you're going to be going for more of a spacey um, indie, you know, something kind of weird like that, um, you can add more reverb. There's no laws against it. Do what you want. But I'm going to show you just quickly uh, what I do in this Averb because it's simple. Um, I keep my pre delay pretty low, my um, reflectivity. Um, that's, that's pretty good. Room size, though, I want to take down. I want to make that room size go down. Why? Because when you're singing in any studio, you're going to be singing in a small room, probably with padded walls, and there's going to be no reverb whatsoever, and that's not natural. If you're singing in a concert hall in a room, there's always going to be reverb, and you want to model that to sound so it can sound a little bit better, sound more natural, sound better to people listening to it. And so... Um, most of the time your room size is going to be small and there's not going to be too much reverb um, so that's what you want to model a smaller room size and then I'm going to have my mix around uh, I'm going to go 16 I don't want it too much because I don't want it taking away from my already awesome vocals okay so I'm going to exit out of this I'm going to play this because all right now I I'm thinking sick I am done I am done okay because that's all I use and I want to listen to it and make sure that it's good and then possibly go back and do more with it so let's listen to it and I don't know why you've come to save my empty soul so um, to me that sounds pretty good it sounds that sounds good clear crisp and natural and that's what I'm going for. So I'm going to say, that's good. Um, normally, I would probably go back and tweak a little bit more and just mess with it just because I'm that way. I like things. I like I like perfection, you know what I'm saying? So um, there you go. Oh, something I forgot. Um, if you are doing reverb and you have a very, very complicated plugin that allows you to have different kinds of reverbs, um, make sure you choose plate reverbs because that's what the professionals use. And it gives a very nice um, replication of what um, vocal reverb should sound like normally. There you go. Little tip. Little tip. You know, you know what I'm saying. All right, I'm gonna get out of here just because this is taking too long, and I hate long videos on YouTube. I just hate it. So comment, rate, subscribe, like usual. Every little thing helps. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below, or send me a private message. I always, always reply back if there is a question, and I love helping people out. That's my thing. And uh, if your question um, is a topic that I think other people should know, I will make a video out of it because, you know, it's easier to explain things in videos than in text anyway, especially in logic. All right. Peace out.